Well, let's, let's start to talk about what it takes to start one of these cars up from cold. In, in the morning when there's uh, perhaps no water in the car, there's no fuel in the car, no pressure, uh, certainly no heat, there's a bunch of things that you're going to want to do to get the car prepared before you just light a torch to it and off you go. Um, it's a little more complicated than that, but uh, really not too bad once you get used to it. In the morning, when you're first starting out with the car and it's cold, uh, the first thing you want to do is check to see if that you have water in the water tank. So there's a copper water tank underneath the front seat in this car. It holds about 25 gallons, uh, and that's what feeds water to the boiler. So the access for the tank is under the seat here. When you lift the cushion, there's a lid on the tank, and you can put a hose in there to fill it. If you didn't have a hose, you'd have to use a bucket. But today we use a hose and it goes pretty fast. It has an overflow so that it won't overflow all over the cockpit of the car. It will go out the overflow when, when it gets to, to full. But usually you like to have the tank full all the way before you start the, the process of uh, uh, firing up the car for the day. After the water tank's full and you know that you've got water in the main tank under the seat, the next thing you want to do is to check to see how much water is actually in the boiler from the last time you ran it. Um, if the system is tight, and you had water in the tank the night before, after you, after you blow the car down, the system will naturally siphon full and fill the boiler for you. If it doesn't siphon full, then you have to fill it with a hose or with a hand pump, which is operated by this lever. Uh -huh. uh, generally, we like to use a hose if, if that condition is what occurs the next morning, that it didn't siphon for whatever reason. Uh, but you would check it with the direct reading glass here. Okay, we've got a, we're about, two-thirds of where we want to be. So we were going to add a little bit of water here. A good method of checking the boiler water level is with a, a clear plastic tube while the car is cold. We attach the tube to one of the blow-off valves at the front of the car, which is uh, connected to the, to the boiler, and we look to see how much water is in the boiler directly at the boiler from the tube. And it, as you can see, the boiler is about this tall, and our water level is about this, this high. About here. So we will have to add a little bit of water to the boiler, uh, but uh, this, this is a, a, a great method of making sure you know how much is in the boiler because that's one of the most important uh, things that you need to do whether you're starting a car or operating it. You always wanna know that you have plenty of water in the boiler. So once you've got the water uh, situation solved with the car and you know that you've got water in the tank and water in the boiler, the next thing you should do is to double check that you have fuel in the main fuel tank. Uh, in a Stanley, there's no gauge. You have to use a stick. Uh, this car is running on kerosene with about 5% unleaded gasoline mixed with it. We're about a little over half a tank. Probably good measure to have a full tank of fuel before you take off for the day. Um, and uh, sometimes, you know, you need to have uh, uh, specialized fuels like kerosene uh, for these cars, depending on how you set them up to run them. Uh, this one is running on kerosene, so we make sure that we have plenty of kerosene on hand. So once we know that we've got fuel in the main fuel tank, which runs the, the burner, we also have to make sure that we have fuel in the pilot tank. This is, in our case, Coleman lantern fluid. Some people use hexane. Uh, this is a small tank on the side of the car that's under pressure, usually somewhere between 15 and 20 pounds. Typically, we charge this, in, and in this case, we have the night before, so that the air that we charge it with settles uh, with the fuel and it gives us a, a more stable reading for the rest of the day so that the, the air doesn't fluctuate. It basically saturates uh, it, the, the fuel with the, with the air they, they combine. Uh, the gauge for that is right here and it's showing that we have 18 pounds so we're ready with the pilot system to, 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 to fire the pilot system up. Uh, we've got about a gallon of fuel in here right now which should be enough for our purposes today and basically a whole day if we wanted to run this thing. A gallon would run, run just fine. If we could put a little bit more in this tank and we could run for a couple of days, let's say, on a tour, if we were running the car on a steam car tour or empty car tour. So now that you've got the uh, fuel pressurized in the pilot tank, main fuel uh, in, the, in the main tank, water in the water tank, and you've got your boiler with a uh, reasonably full uh, level of water in the boiler that you've checked. The next thing you have to make sure is that you have fuel pressure. Now, if your car was 
shut off the night before, the day before, or even quite a while before, and all the valves were shut off properly, chances are you're going to ha still have pressure in the main fuel system, which we do now. If you didn't, there's a charging valve on the side. So the procedure, though, to bring the pressure up to where you'd want it to go is to pump the handle here. And when you pump the handle, it'll bring it up to the proper, proper pressure. For this car, it operates on 120 PSI. When Peter uh, reaches 120 PSI, the automatic valve will bypass any, any more pressure out of the system and it'll just maintain it 120. It won't go above that. It's, it's, a, it's a preset uh, automatic valve with a diaphragm in it. Uh, but if the car had no pressure in it whatsoever, the first thing you'd do was you, you would do exactly what Peter did, pump the handle until you got about, I want to say about 10 pounds, uh, a number of strokes that you know that you can hear the fuel going through the system. And then there's an air charging valve on the side of the car, which you could use a compressor or a hand pump if you had one to build the, the pressure up faster and also to balance the, the level of fuel and air in the, in the pressure tanks in the back. But in this case, the car has already been pressurized. It was shut off properly the last time it was run. So all we have to do is just what Peter did, just, just pump it up just a little bit so that we're ready uh, with the main burner to fire the car up. Before we light the pilot, we want to just add that little bit of water to the boiler when we noticed on the uh, reflex gauge that it was lower than where we would prefer to start the car. So what we do is we open up the throttle valve so that we uh, open up an open avenue on the top of the boiler because the boiler's sealed. And uh, then we turn on the water from a, a garden hose uh, connected to the blow off on the car that has the connection uh, that accepts a, a hose. So once we've got all of the fluids uh, uh, in place and all the pressures uh, sh where they should be, the next thing that we need to do is to light the pilot. And the first step is that we want to make sure that the valve at the bottom of the pilot tank is open. That lets the, 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 the fuel in the pilot tank move forward uh, through the system uh, toward, the, toward the burner. There's a valve right here underneath, and we open that up. We always feel that it's good practice to shut the valve off in the evening or when you're storing the car for a long time, just as a safety precaution. This car is equipped with a operator control for the pilot as well, which is on the dashboard right here. And we're gonna open that valve up. And that valve now sends the pressurized fuel from the tank all the way to the front of the uh, burner where during fire up operation, we have a third valve which controls it at the point that you're using the torch uh, so that you have some control over the uh, fuel management while you're, while you're operating the torch at the front of the car. Okay. Now that the valves are open, Peter's going to open up the hood because we want to get the hood up out of the way and open up the flap on the top of the boiler so that the system can breathe. And then he's going to light the pilot by preheating it first. Then lighting the pilot, turning the valve on, and with any luck, the pilot will light and there'll be a nice blue flame inside the burner that will start the process that, uh, of lighting the main burner. Now that the pilot's lit, there's a little bit of a waiting game that has to happen. We, need, we want that pilot to be uh, cooking everything in there for at least 15 minutes. Half an hour is better. It doesn't matter if it's an hour. As long as we've got water in the boiler and the pilot's lit, we're good. We don't want to rush the, the startup because what the pilot's doing is it's also heating the main burner vaporizer, which runs directly above. There's a heavy barrel, and we get that heat sink good and warm. It really aids in uh, firing up when we, when we switch on the main burner with the kerosene. So um, this is where, you know, once you've got all that other stuff done that, that we were doing with the car in terms of fuel and water management, the next thing that we want to do is, is just sort of wait and let it warm up. So one of the first things we like to do is to take the car outside before we fire it up, fire up the main burner just for safety uh, sake. Um, it's a lot easier to deal with out here uh, if, you, if you get into some kind of a fire situation, which usually doesn't happen, but you never know. Uh, much safer to do it out, outdoors. So what Peter's doing now is warming up the, uh, the main branch forks for the main burner. Uh, and they're connected to the vaporizer, so we're preheating things so that when we 
uh, send the kerosene down there, it'll begin to vaporize sooner. So while Peter's working on the car down here, heating up the branch forks, I'm going to open up the valves to uh, allow the, uh, uh, the fuel to uh, get up to the front of the car. So the first one I'm going to open up underneath the skirt here on this particular model is this main fuel valve right here. And then second, the pressure retaining valve. So now the fuel is live to the dashboard. From there, we can fire up the car. What Peter just did was, uh, after he preheated things, he closed the peephole after checking to make sure the pilot was still lit. And we want to do that before we uh, send fuel to the main burner. Now, what this car is equipped with is a fire-up valve, which sends the Vert's pilot fuel to the main burner first. And uh, as soon as she steps away from the front of the car, I'll, I'll light up the, uh, the main burner on the pilot fuel. When you hear a hiss like that, that's, that means the burner is ignited. So right now we're burning pilot fuel, the lighter fuel from the pilot tank in the main burner. And you don't have to do this for very long. It's just to sort of heat up everything quickly. It ignites easier, it vaporizes much easier than the kerosene, obviously. And uh, so we're getting, we're, getting that, uh, we're getting that taken care of. Once I've preheated this thing, where I feel that I've got a reason, reasonable amount of uh, uh, preheat, I'm going to crack the main burner very slightly, and you'll hear the main burner kick on, which is much louder. And we're trying to get that thing to, to uh, vaporize. So we don't want to overdo it. We want to just crack it one lobe on the, on, the, on the handle, and that should be it. Just a little bit. That wh loud whistling noise that you just heard uh, is uh, the fuel going into the, into the uh, vaporizer at a high rate of speed. And it's uh, sort of like in a pipe organ and, it's, and it uh, resonates and causes that whistle. Once you're on the road, you really don't hear it too much. It's only when you're really kind of cranking it open that it, that it will do that. But right now we've got it neck down while we're slowly building fire. So you won't hear that. You'll just hear a hissing noise of the fuel going in and the flames going up through the fire tubes. Another thing that you want to do while you're working on this thing is we open the throttle up at least brief for a while at the beginning here uh, so that we allow water and steam to circulate in the superheater because there's a superheater uh, pipe that's wound in a coil between the burner and the boiler and we want that to have um, steam, or steam, to go, steam going through it to cool it as, we, uh, as uh, we, we run the car. Another thing we want to do is we want to open up the drip valve to the engine to let any condensate that's caught in the line from the, from the boiler to the engine to drain out because we don't want to run the car with a high water condition in the boiler for sure, but also we don't want to have condensation in the valve, uh, in the steam chest uh, to cause us a problem and uh, you know, possibly damage the engine. The, the burner is on. Uh, Peter's in the uh, cockpit and he's pumping the hand pump to maintain that 120 pounds of fuel pressure that is required to, to run the burner. Um, we can let it drop down to about 80, but we don't like to let it go further than that. So that's uh, generally what we're doing. So right now, vaporized fuel is going into the burner. The burner is ignited. It's going to begin to boil the water. And that's how we make the steam. Close up the hood and uh, take off while the burner's still lit. The main burner is uh, just, just shut off on automatic and we're at 550 pounds steam pressure. Slightly higher than, than what we like, we're still adjusting this car, but, uh, but certainly within the range. Um, everything is all set to go. Uh, it took us under 10 minutes from uh, main fire, uh, turning on the main fire to being up to 500 PSI. So that's uh, actually reasonably quick. It's the waiting time for the pilot that, that is uh, the critical uh, component here to make it go smoothly, which we follow. So I'm going to take off the car and you can see how it runs. So 
when you come back uh, after a run, as I mentioned, we try to turn the main burner off before we pull into where we're going, if we know where we're going. Uh, and we know we're going back to the shop, so we shut it off down the street. It evacuates out a lot of the, the, uh, the gases that, that, are, that may be built up if we stop suddenly without a draft on the car. Um, that's just one of the things that we, we like to do. Now, when we come in and it's the end of the day and we're going to blow the car down, um, we go through the, we go sort of go through the reverse checklist to shut things off. We've got the main burner valve off on the dash. We will also shut the pilot off. We will close the pumps, both the main, uh, the, the bypasses, both the main and the, and the secondary bypass. Uh, we'll close uh, the pressure retaining valve. We'll close all of the fuel shutoff valves, the one from the tank, the one underneath the, the skirt here, which is the main shutoff valve, and the pilot shutoff valve at the tank. We shut them all off all the time, just as a matter of course. So at that point, everything is shut down on the car. We back the car in, and then usually I open the drip valve when I'm back in the car in the garage, just as a little added safety, because it, it, these cars go just as fast in reverse as they're going forward. So with the drip valve open, it tempers it a little bit. I don't do that if I'm going to go for a long distance, because I, that also washes oil off the valves and, and the, the components in the engine with the steam blowing out through. We want to keep that oil going in the engine. So for a short distance of you know, 15, 20 feet, not an issue. Uh, once everything's locked down, we lock the throttle in position. We always lock the throttle when we get out of the car because if somebody bumps this throttle, the car takes off. So always lock the throttle. That's one of the things to remember. Um, other than that, there's no electrical system, so to speak, on the car except for a little accessory light that we have so that we can see our water gauge uh, and we shut that one off. And then we're ready with all fire extinguished, pilot, main burner, and all the valves shut off to all the fuel and all of the water systems, we're now ready to blow the car down to put it away for the night. This car has four taps off the bottom of the boiler that blow it down from four, basically four quadrants. One of them is also connected to this, this uh, reflex gauge, the water level gauge, so that that also gets blown down while, while we're doing our, 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 our process here. And, uh, to blow it down, it's kind of dramatic, it's fun at the end of the day, it's sort of the end of the day and it makes it, makes it a lot of fun uh, when you get back from a tour or something and you can blow the car down. And it usually impresses all the spectators. There you go, that's why it's called the Stanley Steamer. That's all there is to it.